The Top 10 Abandoned Places in Tennessee 10. Higdon Hotel in Reliance The hotel was originally Harriet Dodson's residence when it was first constructed in 1878. The land was sold to the Higdon family in 1883, while a turn of events transpired during the next five years. As railroad tracks were being installed through the town in 1890, the Higdons expanded the building's length and converted it into a boarding house for railroad managers and supervisors. The boarding house was converted into a riverfront resort once the railroad was finished. The property was sold to the Webb family, who turned it into their own mansion once the passenger train ceased passing through the town. The Webb family ultimately let the building fall into disrepair but have been fighting to keep the property standing. They subsequently launched a campaign to get the building and other neighboring historic structures listed to the National Register of Historic Places, which was eventually successful in 1986 when the Reliance Historic District was named. 9. Stadium Inn the Stadium Inn has a quite terrible reputation around the state due to the hotel's bizarre tales and its mad squatters. The hotel was in operation for around 50 years and was reportedly always thought of as a one-star place to stay. There were rooms available for as little as $25 a night, but they were dirty, moldy, and not a place a sober person would want to stay. Numerous allegations of theft, violence and even four fatalities within occurred while it was in existence. Even though the facility has now officially closed, the reviews are still available on the internet. 8. Rule High School In 1927, Rule High School started welcoming students. The name was derived from Commander William Rule, a former Union Army captain who eventually served as Knoxville's mayor. When it was opened in the fall of 1927, it had 525 students in the primary grades and 261 in the junior high and high school grades. Gradually, lower classes were eliminated, leaving the school with only grades 7 to 9. However, the school closed in 1991 as a result of low enrollment. In 2016, Knox County Schools sold it to Knox County as surplus property. 7. Pressman's Home Trade School just outside of Rogersville in Hawkins County, Tennessee, is the abandoned community of Pressman's Home. Long abandoned, the old North American headquarters of the International Printing Pressman Assistance Union now serves as a somber memorial to the past. The military's administrative center included a post office, a chapel, a sanitarium, a trade school, a hotel, and even a retirement residence between 1911 and 1967. Pressman's home once had its own town title, with residents having access to electricity before the rest of Hawkins County. The region was swiftly abandoned after the headquarters transfer in 1967, which was driven by oppositional unions in the 1960s. 6. Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary In Tennessee's Morgan County, Brushy State Penitentiary was established in 1896. Prisoners were kept in wooden barracks and compelled to work in adjacent coal mines. For the bulk of its history, Rushy Mountain served as a maximum security jail for the worst offenders in the state's penal system. A significant portion of its inmates were either serving life sentences or had been sent to Brushy due to discipline problems at other state prisons. Newspapers in Tennessee had reported on the terrible circumstances at the Brushy Mountain Prison for years, and by 1930 the main institution had earned the nickname Firetrap. It was destroyed in 1933 and rebuilt with a brand new concrete and stone building. Prisoners quarried the sandstone that was used to build the new facility. The state of Tennessee closed Brushy Mountain Penitentiary in 2009. The closing of the prison was a financial setback for the community because many residents of Morgan County had spent their whole working life at the jail. 5. Knoxville College In 1875, Knoxville College in Knoxville, Tennessee, was established. It started out as a training institution but was given the college designation in 1877. On a total of 39 acres, Knoxville College featured a total of 17 buildings. Students at Knoxville College were able to finish their degree programs debt-free due to the school's debt-free policy. 
This may have been the primary cause of the college's decline in the 1970s. Many campus buildings had been abandoned by the 1990s, yet students still attended classes there even though the campus was beginning to fall apart around them. Despite receiving a $4.5 million loan from the U.S. government in 2003, Knoxville College continued to pursue enrollment by offering students a debt-free alternative. They had no more enrollment, and their debt kept growing. The Environmental Protection Agency took custody of the isolated, closed-off A.K. Stewart Science Hall on June 9, 2014, to carry out an urgent cleanup of harmful substances that Knoxville College had unlawfully kept in its laboratories but tried to conceal given that the hall was abandoned. The college's debt increased by roughly $500,000 as a result. Knoxville College made the decision to halt classes until the fall of 2016 in an announcement in April of that year. The college remained closed as a result until further notice. Since 1997, when the vast bulk of the campus buildings began to be abandoned, the Knoxville Fire Department has responded to more than 30 fires on campus. 4. Western State Hospital It was the final asylum from Tennessee's Victorian era to be erected, and it also received the least amount of funding. Patients here varied from voluntary committals to murders, pedophiles, and rapists and were always underfunded and overcrowded. The youngest patient admitted into the institution was just four years old. In November 1989, the Gothic-style asylum had its grand debut. On the first day, there were 156 patients, by the early 1960s, there were more than 2,000. Patients who were less aggressive were confined in the main structure, while those who were incurable were housed on adjoining wings with dormitories. In this facility, Patients underwent mental interventions such as lobotomies, electric shock, insulin shock, hydrotherapy, and more. Patients were lucky if they saw a psychiatrist for 10 minutes a week at the facility due to understaffing. With the advent of new psychotropic medications and the outlawing of unpaid patient labor, the patient population began to decline. With further deinstitutionalization, many patients were released to the community. None of the asylum's admission or death records are still in existence, however any patients who passed away while being treated there are buried in nearby unmarked graves. 3. Hartsville Nuclear Plant The Tennessee Valley Authority started construction on the Hartsville Nuclear Plant in 1975 in order to prepare for the energy demands of the 21st century. The facility would have been the biggest nuclear plant in the world at the time. In addition to the four planned generators, many other structures were under construction. Later, other teams demolished the majority of the power plant. A little less than 10 years later, it was decided to put an end to the whole undertaking. With the exception of the distinctive nuclear cooling tower, the boomtown fell out of business and people returned to their rural homes. In the end, TVA released the majority of the property for commercial construction, 2. Playboy Mansion The Swingers Tiki Palace in Chattanooga, Tennessee, was built by strip club tycoon Billy Hall in 1972. The 5,600-square-foot home was known for its unique Playboy bunny-shaped pool with ear-shaped swimming tunnels that lead to the bedrooms. But the place was left to rot 12 months later after Hall was charged with hiring a hitman to murder his wife Gloria's lover and pleaded guilty to income tax evasion. Hull was jailed for 20 years for hiring an assassin to kill Roland Hargis, as he emerged from the Tradewinds nightclub in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hull's grandmother, Katie Holcomb had run a bootleg whiskey operation, and he was convicted of tax evasion in relation to her estate when she died in 1969, according to documents about his life. 1. Old Tennessee State Prison The Tennessee State Prison, located in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee, has a unique history. It was constructed in the fortress style of the New York State Penitentiary at Auburn, New York, and opened as part of the Auburn Penitentiary System in 1898. The Auburn Method made an effort to rehabilitate a prisoner via introspection, seclusion, and healthy labor. At night, the convicts slept alone in their own cells after working silently in factories during the day with downcast eyes. 
They were not allowed to speak to one another under any circumstances, and they were only permitted to receive letters or phone calls from family and friends when it was absolutely necessary. There were 800 tiny cells in the prison, each intended for a single inmate. Every prisoner was required to work physically, both as part of their rehabilitation and to help pay for their detention. Beginning in the 1840s, jail work for hire became commonplace. Private industries were developed on the prison site to take advantage of the free work of prisoners since jail labor was so profitable and generated significant sums of income for the state. The first program for leasing out prisoner labor was established in 1870 when the state penitentiary and Tennessee Coal, Iron and Railroad Company negotiated an agreement. Free laborers organized a strike against the business as a show of disapproval, and the contract was rejected. This was the first in a series of uprisings against the prisoner leasing system of employment. In 1902, 17 inmates destroyed the end of one prison wing resulting in the death of one prisoner and the escape of two others. Later, a gang of inmates took over the White Housing Wing, which was separated, and held it captive for 18 hours before turning themselves into the authorities. Convicts took control of a switch engine and used it to destroy the prison gates in 1907. Prisoners made a mass escape in 1938. At the jail, there have been a number of significant fires, one of which destroyed the dining hall. The Tennessee Department of Corrections decommissioned this ancient jail and erected a new penitentiary in 1992. The federal court imposed a permanent order prohibiting convicts from ever being held at this prison as part of a class action case, Grubbs v. Bradley. To protect the anonymity of the site, the institution was referred to as Walls Correctional Facility. The land is maintained by the Tennessee Department of Corrections, and although being vacant, trespassers are kept out. According to the department, anyone caught will face legal action. Those are the top 10 abandoned places in Tennessee, if you enjoyed the video make sure to like for a part 2. Thanks for watching.